A 46 year old female brought to ED with uh, sudden onset uh, shortness of breath that occurred with vomiting. Symptoms began two hours prior to her arrival. And she also complained of a productive cough for last few days. So uh, the thing to note is there is an acute onset of symptom, two to three hours onset. On admission, BP was high, 220 by 140. Heart rate was 180 per minute, again high. Respiratory rate was 40 beats per minute. There was no fever and SpO2 was 97% with 14 liters per minute. So she was having a respiratory failure also and it was severe respiratory failure. So uh, talking about examination, other systems, uh, the cough was there, but there was no other system localizing uh, symptoms like abdominal pain, back pain, rash, fatigue, or bloody stools. Past history was the, she underwent lobectomy in 2013. After that, uh, she was treated with radiotherapy and she also had a deep vein thrombosis for which she was treated with anticoagulants. Um, there was no other significant history of allergies or uh, any addictions. Medications, he was taking methylprednisolone for cancer and warfarin for DVT. Physical examination is important in cases of uh, pulmonary edema. So physical examination revealed increased JVP. So this is one of the important findings which we see in uh, pulmonary edema patients. Severe respiratory distress, respiratory rate of 40 per minute, wheezing and bilateral respiratory crepts or uh, rails. So uh, bilateral crepts are an important finding because often pulmonary edema patients are confused with acute exacerbation of COPD or asthma. So in patients with COPD or asthma will not be uh, finding crepts usually until they are having bronchitis or pneumonia coexisting. But usually we will find only ronchi or wheezing. We will not find crepts. But if you find predominantly uh, crepts on basal areas, then it raises a suspicion of pulmonary edema. Tachycardia was there. Murmur was heard at uh, aortic uh, and, uh, and specified gallop was also there. Peripheral edema was not there. So peripheral edema is usually seen in right heart failure patients. But in uh, left heart failure patients, especially if it is acute, two, three, two to three hours, we will not be finding peripheral edema. We will be having only pulmonary edema. And profuse warm setting, sweating, rest of the examination was unremarkable. So the differential diagnosis, which was achieved was acute cardiogenic pulmonary edema. Pulmonary is secondary to hypertensive crisis or secondary to ACS. ACS is acute coronary syndrome, aspiration pneumonia as dyspnea began after vomiting or pulmonary embolism because patient already had a history of deep vein thrombus. So the thing to note here is in pulmonary embolism, uh, it is unusual to find bronchi and crepts. So how patient will present with pulmonary embolism is sudden onset shortness of breath. He'll be having some predisposing factors. Like in this patient, he had also, uh, already she had a history of cancer. So there is a possibility. But it is unusual to find ronchi or crepts in patients with pulmonary embolism. Uh, again, uh, 180 beats per minute is also unusual. Pulmonary embolism patients will have tachycardia definitely. But usually uh, it is like in the range of 100, 120 or 130. Aspiration pneumonia can be a possibility, but finding bilateral crypts again is uh, unusual in aspiration pneumonia. It will be usually unilateral. So uh, more probability of pulmonary edema, cardiogenic or secondary to hypertensive crisis or secondary to ACS was there. So what was done is uh, basic uh, lab test was sent and initial uh, treatment was initiated with uh, uh, diuretics, nitrates, nebulized salbutamol, eptotropium, steroids, oxygen, or uh, potential rate and rhythm controlling depending on the ECG. L laboratory tests, anti pro NP, tropi, these were assessed, uh, sent, blood gas analysis, ECG, and ultrasound of heart, lungs, and IVC was done, X-ray was. So <coughs> what was found is, yeah, NIV was started. So NIV is a very important um, therapeutic agent for patients with pulmonary edema. Uh, its role has been proven. So BiPAP uh, uh, or NIV is a good adjunct and it uh, helps in reducing the uh, symptoms. Also uh, prevents intubation and uh, it is uh, helpful in preventing uh, the um, uh, resolution, uh, helpful in resolution of pulmonary edema by applying positive pressure. IV nitrates, what nitrates does is it causes vasodilation. So it reduces afterload. So uh, overall, it is part of management of pulmonary, cardiogenic pulmonary edema. ECG, we can see there is supraventricular tachycardia. There are no PVFs and there is ST depression. So what ECG showed was SVT uh, with beats of 180 per minute and ST depression throughout the pericardium. Uh, no clear PVFs. 
chest x-ray, uh, it showed uh, changes of lobectomy along with changes of, we can see there is uh, some changes of um, peri uh, uh, infiltrates, which is uh, similar to bad wing appearance. Uh, curly A lines, which is uh, going from the hilum to the towards periphery, curly B lines, I think we cannot appreciate in this X-ray, but there is some blunting of angles also, uh, raising the possibility of mild effusion also. So X-ray showed signs of previous lobectomy, multiple bilateral areas of consolidation, mainly in the right middle zone with pleural effusion and cardiac enlargement. USG is a very useful adjunct in the evaluation of patients of pulmonary edema. So USG is used for both for echo and for chest USG. So chest USG showed multiple B lines. So these are known as uh, B lines, common tail appearance. It is indicated of lung fluid. So pulmonary edema will be having multiple B lines. Echocardiogram again showed uh, myocardial hyperkinesis, normal left and right section dimensions and absence of pericardial effusion. IVC again was full. It is an important marker of uh, systemic uh, blood volume. So if IVC is full, there is high chances that patient may have pulmonary edema. Lab results showed leukocytosis. TLC was 18,000. Creatinine was mildly elevated. And ABG showed mixed acidosis. <clears throat> so next action, diuretics were started. Furosemide 100 milligram, nitroglycerin was given and morphine was given. Patient rapidly improved during her ED course. Then uh, she was admitted to emergency medicine with continuous monitoring and frequent revolution for 72 hours with progressive clinical and hemodynamic improvement. And NIV was slowly weaned. ACS was included with further HS tropoid serial ECG evolution. So most important thing in cardiogenic pulmonary edema is to rule out acute coronary syndrome. So uh, we'll be discussing later on what are the causes of cardiogenic pulmonary edema, but often ACS coexist with pulmonary edema. So we should rule out always ACS in patients with underlying cardiogenic pulmonary edema. So in this patient, the pulmonary edema was due to hypertensive crisis because of high blood pressure. So hypertensive crisis can generate pulmonary edema due to active vasoconstriction, which increases the afterload. So we know there is a linear association between um, the afterload and the stroke uh, volume, preload, afterload, and stroke volume. So as the afterload increases, uh, it may precipitate cardiac failure. BNP may be falsely negative in flash pulmonary edema, and patients often improve uh, very quickly, prompt and regression of science symptoms after rapid treatment.